colleague just before said that he doesn't know why you are here. And this is actually a very good point because it is late. You're probably tired. So I think that I should start by saying thank you very much for keeping with us. It's amazing. You guys are amazing. Uh, now, I, I would like to start this talk uh, by saying that I do believe that physics, which is what I'm going to talk about today, is a, in some sense a kind of philosophy. In, meaning that in the end, after all the abstract mathematics, it should say something about the world. You know, I know that knowing something about the world is something that we human beings want to do and that we like. But sometimes, because of all this abstract mathematics, we just don't understand what's going on. So what I'd like to do today, and since I'm studying physics, what I'd like to do today is bring to you an idea of how we physicists think the small-scale small structure of the universe, of space and time, might look like. So my name is Jose. I am finishing the master's thesis in theoretical mathematical physics. And today, in five minutes, a bit under it, we're going to go through general relativity, quantum mechanics, and quantum space-time. <laughs> so, this talk, it's a physics talk, must have an Einstein peak. There he is. <laughs> now, Einstein means gravity. And we've known for some time how gravity works, right? So gravity is about taking some object uh, and putting it in the air and letting it fall. And we know that it goes to the ground. Well, this is what I thought about gravity for a long time, until a guy that was very insightful came along. That's this guy. And this guy realized that there was a lot more about gravity. It's not just an abstract force. <laughs> gravity, for Einstein, is actually about a geometrical property of the universe. So for Einstein, what's actually going on is that the universe is something like either a ball, a sphere, or a donut. Or if you're from Munich, you might think that the universe is something like a pencil. <laughs> And the idea is that what's actually going on, you can describe gravity by imagining that you're like uh, ants on a surface, on a flat surface. And these ants are just going straight on. Well, the surface is flat, so they just go straight on, and they just move in a straight line. What happens, though, if you put some massive object on the surface? It's going to deform the surface. And since the surface is deformed, the same ants that just were walking on a straight line will curve without knowing it, because the surface itself is curved. So, for Einstein, the, the, the big uh, realization of Einstein was that you could describe something like you know, orbitation of planets around the star by the geometrical properties of spacetime. Not only this, spacetime itself is a physical object with dynamics that interacts with matter, which means that space and time is something as real, as manipulatable as a water bottle or as a football ball that you can kick. This is the first important lesson for us today. Then you have quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is really explaining Schrodinger scale. We are a modern audience, however, so we'll talk about a robot Schrodinger's cat. You know, it's a robot because it has a battery on the face. <laughs> what do you do? You, put the, you make the cat very small, put it inside a box. When you take the cat outside of the box, this is what you see. You will find out that, in truth, you cannot actually measure, you cannot predict what is happening to the battery. The battery needs depleting, and when you take it out, it's going to have some value, you know, either half full or even less full or completely empty. And you cannot predict which one of them is, even if you know everything about the battery. And not only that, compared to the classical case, you expect some continuous property of the world to be actually discrete. So things that we think take every possible value from 0 to 100%, let's say, actually have discrete values. And it's just that you're looking too far away, so it actually looks very continuous. That's the battery. So the two lessons from quantum mechanics are these. Things that we think are continuous classically, in the big scales, are actually discrete. And the cats, or the physical objects, in truth exist on a superposition of states. This is how we physicists describe that you cannot really predict what's going on with the cat. Well, this is interesting. So this is, you know, so this is two minutes, uh, well, almost five minutes for quantum, for quantum mechanics and general relativity. Now we go to quantum space time. There's something called spin foams. It's one of the theories, we have many more. And spin foams is a model for space time that thinks of space time using a very interesting object. That object is the quantum tetrahedron. But it is. <laughs> now, it is a tetrahedron because it has four faces. Why is it quantum? Well, it is quantum because it is described by side lengths that also have discrete values. They don't take continuous values, just like the battery. They have discrete values. And what that means is that, just like the cat, the tetrahedron is described by shapes can be like this, can be like that, or like that, depending on the side lines. And the tetrahedron itself is a superposition of tetrahedron. This implements the two lessons of quantum mechanics. Discrete values, superposition of physical states. 
to go to classical to the classical vision of space and that Einstein have had, we call this a bubble. We go to a foam. We put these guys together, and we make a space-time. So the big, uh, the big novelty of this conception of space-time is that you have uh, honestly a quantum mechanical description, and you have something like a minimal unit. You have atoms of space and time, and this is amazing because this means that you know if at some point we will be able to measure stuff, we can measure things like fluctuation of areas, fluctuation of volumes. On a moment, you're measuring a very small area, and then it changes the area. And at some moment, you're measuring a very small volume, and it changes the volume. And of course, well, my time is already over. Uh, this is just a five-minute talk, as you can imagine. But we have an after party afterwards. <laughs> so I, I would like it a lot if you can come to me. We can discuss about this stuff. And I think to finish, I think this is something uh, that everyone, every, every one of my colleagues would, would ask of you and agree. Uh, I would just say, please, stay curious. And thank you very much for listening.